So hey, how you doing? It's Kai and I'm going to show you how to relocate and replace the knock sensor for a 99 to 03 Lexus RX 300. It's for the 1MZ FE engine, so it's pretty much the same process. The only difference is with the RX where you're gonna mount the knock sensor is gonna be slightly different, but there's someone else who did the same thing. He did a really good job and got into a little bit more detail. I'm gonna tag his video link in the description and I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna also put some timestamps in to make it a little easier for you to just skip to the parts that you wanna see. So I so hope to you drill the hole to mount your knock sensor for the relocation. You're going to need a one dash four, well, I'm sorry, one slash, you know, one a quarter dash 18 MPT. I got this from Lowe's for $12, about $12. You drill the hole first and then you get this and you would drill or you would thread it but you need to thread it little by little because if you make it too deep the hole's going to be out of balance and it's not going to fit in it's going to be too wide which is what i did and fucked it up the first time and had to drill a second hole second i'm going to show you how to test the ground to make sure it's actually grounded properly so after fucking up the hole the first time when i actually drilled the proper hole um and before I put the connector on, I actually turned the knock sensor with this drill bit. It's a deep socket grip bit or grip socket, whatever you want to call it. But it's a deep socket 1-1-16. One one it's a Husky. I got this for about $8. It was a lot less than what it would have cost to do the repair. But anyway, and just turned it with my drill. Make sure your hole is grounded properly, etc. You'll get the positive side of your voltmeter, stick it on the battery. You see the knock sensor. Uh, you're going to touch the negative side on the base of your knock sensor. So, if you look at the voltmeter. Ah, Jesus Christ. I'm going to touch the base of my knock sensor. And you see it says 12. And this is where I was touching at the base of it at the bottom. Okay, so first you're gonna have to remove the air box. So release those clips by just pulling them back. Oh, and also the mass sensor the connector. You're gonna have to remove that. Lift this up. Oh, shit. Also, you're gonna have to release the screw for this hose clamp, 10 millimeter bit or Phillips. I like to use the 10 millimeter. You're gonna pull this off and lift this, pull it off lift it up then you're going to remove the air filter then you're going to release those 10 millimeter screws at the bottom So, there's a little metal piece at the okay, back. So, after you remove your air box, if you look closely, your knock sensor harness wire is right here, this gray wire. And then, if you look closely, the harness can. <laughs> I couldn't get a good camera angle, but this is what the harness will look like. It should have four pins on it. And the other end is over here. Okay, so now I'm going to explain to you how to splice the wire for the knock sensor harness. Because this, of course, is your harness. This is what it's going to look like. You're going to have a wire coming that breaks off into two wires. These two sets of wires are going, there's two white wires going to each knock sensor. As you see, there's a white wire here. That's what you're going to have to cut off and splice. You're not going to cut it there. You're going to cut it somewhere, maybe about this far back and you're going to cut it off and you're going to get a longer wire due to the distance going across the hood of the car to where you mount your knock sensor so you're going to cut it off maybe here on each end and you're going to turn it into one longer wire and then you're going to run that longer wire and splice it back into this white wire that you cut off so you're going to have the two white wires here, you're going to cut it off, 
splice it into one wire, run that longer wire to this wire here, the white wire that goes to the connector. You only need it to go to one connector if you're using one knock sensor, which I'm doing. Because there's no, that's the whole purpose. Okay, so like I was explaining, after you cut those two wires coming from the knock sensor harness, those two white wires, you're gonna have those wires, those two wires, and you're gonna connect them to one wire. Like I explained, something similar to this, I hope you do this and heat shrink it instead of electric taping it and make sure you cover it well, but get those two white wires, splice them together somehow into one wire like this. And you're gonna run that one wire to your connector that you cut off, remember? And after it's you run it, a longer wire, you'll splice this together, you know, twist the wire together, wrap them, uh, heat shrink, I prefer, that's my choice. And as you see, this is the white wire. Trying to get it to focus, but me having this light here doesn't help me. But um, there you go, you have the white wire that's going to plug into your knock sensor. And bam. So you'll plug it into your knock sensor just like this. I hope that makes a little more sense than what I showed you. Our knock sensor harness with the wire spliced. It's about to plug in down there. And I'm gonna run it across here and I got some flex tubing to protect it from heat. And it's running all the way here. Then it's gonna run to the connector that is going to go into the actual knock sensor. So you're gonna have to give me a okay, minute. So I've ran the uh, knock sensor harness here behind the hoses on the cool side and ran it up. And it's in that flex tubing. It's zip tied across this bar so it's not gonna touch anything hot. And it's coming all the way here around. Oh, whoops right there and then it's coming here and then i've already spliced the connector and i'm gonna just plug it in right here whoops bam the only thing left is to get rid of the check engine light you need to actually reset the obd if you don't have an obd scanner you can just disconnect the battery for 10 to 15 minutes that's worked for me and as you see i don't have a check engine light and it hasn't come back. I haven't seen it in the past three to four weeks. No P0330, no P0325. It's worked. I haven't had any issues since. Just make sure you're careful with your knock sensor because they are sensitive. If you drop them, they will be damaged. I actually damaged one of mine in the process. Luckily, I had two and I'm only using one. So 